Hello students, a very warm welcome to my ecology classes. The topic for today's discussion is adaptation in halophytes. Now before we start our discussion, let's first know what is adaptation. Adaptation is a dynamic evolutionary process that helps an organism to better suit itself in a given situation. So it is basically an adjusting procedure that helps an organism to live well in a given situation. Now, why is salinity disturbing these plants? This is the topic for our discussion today. We know salt is indispensable for life, but anything in excess is harmful. Same with salt as well. Excess salinity, what does it do? It disturbs the ionic and osmotic equilibrium that cause an ionic toxicity and osmotic stress at cellular level. So what is happening? If there is excess salt, it is causing trouble to the plants and it is putting the plant in stress. Fine. Now where do these halophytes grow? These halophytes are commonly found near seashores where mesophytes and freshwater hydrophytes cannot grow well. You all know seawater is uh, salty in nature. Therefore, what happens? The environment becomes salty. Over there, other mesophytes and hydrophytes cannot grow. Fine. Now, reduction in water potential of the soil leads to deficiency of water, thus making the soil physiologically dry but physically not dry. Now, why do I say physiologically dry and physically not so? How can it be physically dry? There is plenty of water. The sea is there. The ocean is there. So there is plenty of water. So it cannot be physically dry but physiologically dry. The sweet water that is needed by the plants for its daily activity, for its life sustenance is not there. Therefore, it is physiologically dry but not so physically. Alright. Now we'll come to the morphological adaptive features found in halophytes. Morphological adaptive features are those adaptive features that you can see from outside. So let's start. These plants have deep extensive root system. Look at these. They have deep extensive root system. See? Look over here. Why do they have this? Because they'll have to travel deep inside in search of water. That is why it has got very well developed root system. Next, see the stem develops succulents. The stem becomes succulent. Purpose is what? They can store moisture in it. And it is bushy and stunted. It's not so huge like evergreen trees. It is bushy in nature and it is stunted. It is short. Bushy means what? It is it has got enhanced lateral growth. Right. Now coming to leaves. The leaves are small, thick and entire. Small leaves and if uh, small and entire leaves will, uh, will help in what? It will help in minimizing the surface area. And if the surface area is less, loss of water will also be less. Then coming to buttress roots. Buttress roots are support giving roots. Large amount of large number of adventitious roots are found that develop at the basal part of the tree trunks that provide good amount of support to the plants. These are buttress roots. Okay. And last coming to which one? Last will come to viviparous germination. This is a very important point. Please note. What is viviparous germination? Viviparous germination is that kind of a germination where the seed starts growing when it is still attached to the mother plant. So this is found in halophytes. So this is something very important. Please note. Next coming to pneumatophores. What are pneumatophores? Pneumatophores are negatively geotropic. See, normally roots are positively geotropic. That means they grow in this direction. Okay. But pneumatophores are negatively geotropic. They grow in this direction. Alright. See, they are popping out of the soil. So, they are growing in this direction. So, pneumatophores are negatively geotropic breathing roots or respiratory roots which are found in halophytes such as mangroves. The soil 
in the coastal region has very less amount of air in it they are poorly aerated so in order to get fresh air fresh oxygen what does it do it pop out of the all those negatively geotropic roots or pneumatophores they pop out of the substratum or soil in search of fresh air or oxygen now these roots have got pores on their body which is known as pneumat pneumatodes or lenticels now air exchange takes place through this they give out the excess carbon dioxide and take in fresh oxygen okay now this mangrove vegetation is found where it is found in the gangetic estuary a very famous place near in sundarban regions of west bengal in india now please learn these names as well rhizophora agisera sevicinia are some of the most common halophytes found in india and in various parts of the world as well now we'll come to anatomical adaptation anatomical adaptations are what the adaptations that are found inside the plant body okay the cells in the stems are large they are tightly packed that means they have less intercellular space and highly elastic cell wall okay next see the surface area is relatively less okay surface volume ratio is less and if the surface area is less what will happen lesser amount of water will be lost then we'll come to well developed water storing tissue the stomata are small and few in number here see note this point in green color recent studies show that reduction in number of stomatal density and stomatal pore area of leaf with increasing salinity so it has been reported that once you increase salinity what happens stomatal density and stomatal pore area of the leaf both De uh, both decrease right then we see low chlorophyll content and presence of cuticle on aerial plant parts chlorophyll content is less and presence of cuticle on aerial plant parts this in a way help in minimizing water loss so these are the few adaptive features that are noted in hydrophytes i hope you have understood and have enjoyed learning these uh, features if you have any confusion or doubt anywhere please feel free to get back to me in the comment section so thank you so much for your kind attention goodbye and see you soon